This video is brought to you by Skillshare. SpongeBob SquarePants is truly one of the most iconic cartoon shows of all time, to the point where it has defined a generation. Now, that might sound a bit hyperbolic, but as an aging millennial, I can say on good authority how much this show means to me and my friends. We legit have full-blown conversations that are done exclusively through SpongeBob quotes and memes. Oh, Neptune. So I think it's fair to say that the character has had a lasting impact on anyone who grew up with it, such as myself, and I imagine many of you who are watching this video. There is no denying the accomplishments of SpongeBob, but all good things must come to an end. And SpongeBob did not get the memo. As a matter of fact, we're currently witnessing an upswing in SpongeBob-related content, with multiple spin-offs and the continued march of the original show. For many fans, they see this as oversaturation of the franchise and think that this is ruining SpongeBob, which leads me into the main point of why I'm making this video. What's Ruining SpongeBob is one of the most requested videos I've ever received to cover on my channel, and I can understand why. It's been requested for years now. I have told myself that I want to hold off and wait for developments, to bide my time and seek out actual substance to work with, instead of being a rabid fan who was only complaining about seasonal rot. Multiple videos about that topic already exist out on YouTube, and I did not want to add to the pile, especially when it comes to a cartoon that I hold in very high esteem. I want to give it my all for Spongebob, my best research without confirmation bias or a grudge to settle. So what did I do? I waited for a development, and unfortunately, I got it. Steven Hillenburg, creator of Spongebob, passed away in November of 2018. Steven's death was a tragic loss, and it vastly complicated an already messy situation. Who am I to complain about a cartoon show? when someone had lost their life and people were in mourning. That was not the moment to bring it up. So I continued to bide my time, wondering if the topic itself might officially be too turbulent to address. But shortly after Steven's death, Viacom announced Camp Coral, the first official spinoff of SpongeBob SquarePants. For many people, they were outraged and claimed that this was a violation of Steven's vision that Viacom did not have to worry about Steven anymore and can now do whatever they wanted with the SpongeBob franchise. For the record, it is not as simple as that, but the situation was nonetheless uncomfortable and raised many questions. For those who don't know, SpongeBob is the most successful franchise in Nickelodeon's history. Nothing comes close. Fairly Odd Parents? No. Rugrats? <laughs> no. Cousin Skeeter? Close. <laughs> No, not really, uh, but no. When SpongeBob arrived in 1999, it began its rise as the undisputed champion of the network, and it dominated Nickelodeon's airwaves. Hell, it still does, as we see new episodes and movies well past its 20th anniversary, and its popularity continues to hold strong all the way into season 13. So there's no doubt that SpongeBob is Viacom's most profitable IP, having generated, as of 2019, over $13 billion in merchandising sales. Clearly recognizing the profit potential of SpongeBob, Viacom decided to expand its roster of SpongeBob programming for the first time, and Camp Coral was announced in summer of 2019. It was a contentious move to take a cartoon still incredibly popular and still in production and make more versions of it, all airing at the same time. Also, the fact that the concepts were uh, X characters but babies trope and then a pseudo variety show with Patrick, well, it definitely rubbed longtime fans the wrong way for the continuity issues and also the tonal shift. Now, if this was the only contention though, it would be just another episode of typical fandom drama but things have become a bit more concerning and personal due to a single quotation. Now, the timing of these spinoffs were an odd coincidence. SpongeBob had almost a 20-year history at that point and had been Nickelodeon's flagship franchise the entire time. So it's not like the character did not have the momentum until now. However, the actual validity 
of this quotation remains in question. Trying to track down a first-hand source for Hillenburg's supposed stance has been so far inconclusive. But the most damning evidence comes from a reliable second-hand source. Paul Tibbet, the person who was the showrunner for SpongeBob following Stephen's death, he's gone on record multiple times, both directly on his Twitter and in articles, about how Stephen would have never approved of spinoffs, pulling no punches and accusing the executives and Nickelodeon and Viacom for ignoring his creative wishes, going so far as straight up saying it was a joke with Hillenburg that if the executives ever came to him to try and make SpongeBob babies, <laughs> He'd run! A former storyboard artist for Spongebob and the current showrunner, Vincent Waller, echoed this sentiment back in 2017, before Hillenburg's death, responding on Twitter about a potential Spongebob crossover. The only first-hand account of Hillenburg being against spinoffs, though, is from an interview back in 2009, where he shot down the concept of a Patrick show. <laughs> It's rather ironic that the two concepts for spinoffs we have evidence of Hillenburg opposing are exactly the shows we have running today. Still, even with these smoking guns, the fact remains that we're unable to truly know Hillenburg's actual opinion in the now. Thus, whether this should even be a controversy at all. 2009 was a long time ago. His opinion could have changed in the nine years that followed. As SpongeBob continued to balloon in popularity, it seems highly unlikely, considering his peers back up his then on record position today, but that is the problem with posthumous discussion. You can never know for sure. The alleged opinion means that everyone involved in the discussion now has to either A, assume it's true and speak for the dead by arguing his point, taking his peers in the industry at their word, or B, ignore that aspect talk about the spinoffs more objectively, and risk ignoring the wishes of the series creator by bringing the spinoffs more attention, especially if they end up recommending them. There is no good play. SpongeBob discourse has essentially been overcast by a haze of posthumous speculation. Regardless of Hillenburg's stance, though, there is no denying that after his passing, Viacom did start increasing the SpongeBob IP tripling down on its television presence, almost assuredly to try and also triple down on that $13 billion plus in merchandise. To quote an article, the year following Hillenburg's death, Nick has already launched a dedicated SpongeBob YouTube channel, a new mobile game, a new toy line, SpongeBob Nike sneakers, the SpongeBob Smarty Pants game show, collaboration with designers and artists, and they even introduced a new color called the SpongeBob Yellow which is used in Spongebob cosmetics. Not to forget the aforementioned spinoff shows that seem directly in conflict with Hillenburg's desires. Spongebob is being treated as a multifaceted brand umbrella in its own right, with Nickelodeon's president, Brian Robbins, calling Spongebob Squarepants, quote, our Marvel Universe, all but guaranteeing the continued development of more and more SpongeBob products, and yet another attempt by a large company to take whatever massive properties they control and try and channel the MCU business model with it. Brian, I, I don't want to bury the lead. Patrick Starr has his own show. It, it, when did, how did I miss that? When did it happen? Uh, and, and what was the first spinoff? Does, uh, who, who, else had, does, who else has one? Squidward? Sure. Um, well, Patrick uh, just launched his uh, own show this summer, and it was all part of our franchise plan with the SpongeBob franchise. Uh, the first spinoff ever actually premiered on uh, Paramount Plus at launched this March, Camp Carl, which came from the Sponge on the Run film. Uh, and now we launched Patrick Star this summer. We're also well on our way uh, with the whole SpongeBob universe of all the beloved characters, whether in their own films coming or end in all their TV series. It is no surprise that Viacom is trying to turn SpongeBob into their version of Mickey Mouse. But it's not that simple. SpongeBob isn't Mickey. The two are completely different. Mickey is a blank slate from nearly 100 years ago that you can throw into a variety of scenarios, while SpongeBob is much more defined in his character and setting. So trying to turn him into a Mickey-like icon will only damage the legacy of SpongeBob. It's frustrating. 
we will probably never know for certain what Hillenburg truly thought about this issue in general. And we definitely won't know what he would think about the actual spin-offs that have been released and the state of SpongeBob today. But the fact that the decisions were made public only after his passing makes for a coincidence that just tugs at one's curiosity for conspiracy and disdain for corporate greed. It's a puzzle piece that just fits too easily into the dismal dystopian outlook that so many of us who grew up on SpongeBob have to face. Ultimately though, to bring this full circle, the main purpose of this video is to acknowledge the sensitive and turbulent nature of this topic and how I do desire to cover it, but in a way that is unbiased, respectful, and fully grounded when it comes to research and intention. Again, SpongeBob means so much to me, and I want to be courteous to Steven as a creator, especially when it comes to his privacy and all of the people who are connected to it. Hell, that was my main hang-up and why I'm so conflicted when it comes to this discussion. But as a viewer, as a fan, I don't think it's wrong to ask questions and wonder what happened, especially when there's so much confusion and conflicting information. Now, do we need to hold a trial and demand explanations? To put our nose in the private affairs of Steven and his family and his close friends? No, absolutely not. That's crossing a line. If I reach a point where it is like, leave it alone, that is not your business, then I will leave it alone. But at the same time, I believe that it's not wrong to be curious about such an iconic show that has been in the public eye for 20 years. So yeah, this is a very unusual video and is more of me declaring my intentions of wanting to research it and what has happened to it. And I suppose this video also is me explaining my conflicting thoughts, if anything, and how I often wonder about this subject. But hey, I feel that this is probably the best way to vent and get things off my chest before I sally forth with my research. I just wanted to make it abundantly clear that I am going to treat this topic with the utmost tact and respect while also being able to conduct myself in an unbiased manner. I think I got my work cut out for me, and all for a cartoony sponge who cooks burgers and catches jellyfish. <laughs> Man, if only middle school me knew how much this show would mean to me as the sad adult that I am. Grown man researching SpongeBob. <laughs> sad, right? <laughs> how sad. Goodbye, everyone. I'll remember you all in therapy. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Skillshare. For those who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, get lost in creativity. And let me tell you, there are options, thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics that range from illustration to animation, video editing, social media marketing, and more. Skillshare is truly an excellent way to hone your skills, whether you're a pro or a casual hobbyist. As of late, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection and have asked myself, what can I do to help myself become a better me? But personally, I find that the pursuit of knowledge to be one of the greatest parts of the human experience. You get to challenge yourself and your mind and see if you can learn, master, a new skill or trait. Heck, it might even become something you can do as a profession someday. For me, I've been taking aim at Blender. I can already hear the 3D animators going, ah, so it begins. Good luck. Well, you know what? I, I don't need your luck. Cause I have help, dang it. Specifically, the workshop, bring your illustrations to life with Blender 3D from Southern Shoddy 3D. So for those who don't know, I have ADD. Learning can be very challenging at times. Being told how to do something isn't very effective for me, but being shown, oh, ho, ho, now we're talking. I can actually see how things are done step by step and can go at a pace that I'm comfortable with. Like I've been meaning to pursue Blender lessons for a while now, but I did not know where to start. And then bing, like a light in my head. It was like Skillshare, go to Skillshare. And it's been a very fun and fulfilling experience. Best of all, Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads. 
Plus, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So I highly recommend Skillshare. It's a great place to improve yourself, sharpen your skills, satisfy your pursuit of knowledge. And for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, well, you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Go check it out.